everyone and welcome back to our tutorial for the Jack Skellington bust. Uh, this is part three and the final part of this tutorial. So welcome back uh, if you're continuing on with us. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing and also start with tutorial number one. Now I know that these tutorials are lengthy um, but I am trying to create them for beginner uh, paper mache artists who are interested in learning paper mache. Um, so they are very in depth and a little lengthy. So let's carry on and go over the list of materials that we're going to need for this final portion of the tutorial. All right, well, the first thing you're going to need is your Jack Skellington armature, the bust that you've already created and started to clay over. You're going to need the bow tie that you created. And we're going to get into a little bit more sculpting on the bow tie in this uh, last portion of, of the tutorial. You're going to need your paper mache paste, paper mache clay, along with your uh, one inch chip brush to use for smoothing the paper mache clay with the paste. Um, you may need and I say may and because there's different uh, techniques that I'm going to go over. So you may need a hot glue gun, some hot glue sticks, optional, and this is uh, some Velcro. We'll get, we'll get to that part as well. This is optional. You're going to need your assortment of tools that will help you with the sculpting process. You'll need some sandpaper, so medium to fine grain sandpaper. And then we're gonna paint in this process as well for this uh, last section of the tutorial. So you will need some paint. You're gonna need some black paint and you're gonna need some white paint. Um, I, I also use, before I paint over any of my armatures, I uh, primer it with white primer. That is optional. One more thing on your list of materials that is optional is a fine line paint marker or paint pen in white. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to draw in the pinstripes on Jack Skellington's suit. Um, like I said, this is optional. You can use just a, a fine paintbrush, thin paintbrush with white paint um, if that's what you choose. All right, so that's it. Let's get to it. Let's start back off uh, with, or start back up with our bow tie that we created. And as you can see, I have two bow ties here. Um, one that I have covered front and back with uh, the thin layer of paper mache clay and then one that is completely finished here. Um, so what I did on this one and I don't know if you noticed in the last tutorial this is the one that I was showing you that was finished but it actually it ended up having a crack right here so I had to go in there and put more clay on there. So while I was at it I decided to make the center portion or the batter, the cat uh, center portion of his bow tie a little more three-dimensional. If you remember correctly, uh, the last um, on this bow tie, it was pretty flat. There wasn't much uh, movement to it other than the little lines that I kind of drug through with my sculpting tool. So I went ahead and I built up and you can see that. So it does look more three-dimensional around that area. And this is a lot more sturdy now too. Um, so as you can see that. So if you wanna take the time to go ahead and do that, um, that's what I'm gonna do right now on this one. So we'll go ahead and start doing that on this one right now. So I'm gonna make sure I have my uh, paper mache clay here. I have my paste and get rid of that stuff. Just using that as a reference. 
Um, I think I want that to be the front because it has a little bit more movement to it. But you're going to make, that, that'll be your decision. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just on top of the layer of clay that I already have on there, I'm going to go ahead and just fill in, bulk up with some more of my clay here. Alright, so I have bulked up that area where the center of the bow tie is. And at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and go in with my paper mache paste here, which is just my normal mixture of flour and water. And we're going to use the paintbrush to go ahead and smooth it out. Um, if you have a if you have a smaller paintbrush, something like this, um, for a smaller area, it'll probably work a little bit better, but your bigger brush uh, will also work. So I'm just going in. I'm not really trying to sculpt anything into it at this point. I'm just smoothing it. Okay, I've got that smoothed out a bit um, and then I'm going to go ahead and take my little rounded sculpting tool and I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit more um, on the surface of it. Alright, something like that. Just kind of shaping it a little bit. Now on this one I failed to etch in the wet clay, my little lines that you see that I took the time to do on this on this one. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw draw in some fine some fine lines. I'm going to go ahead and draw in some, just scrape in some fine lines using the other part of my tool here. Do the other side. Just like that. Okay, and then while this is wet, I'm going to go ahead and take the time to press in a couple of the eye slots on the center of my uh, bow tie here. Very basic. Just like that, that'll do. Okay, so this is done. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. Um, so if you choose to do that and make your bow tie a little more three-dimensional, um, that's how you would do that. Next, next thing we're going to do is go ahead with our armature here, our bust. But I didn't show what I didn't show you in the last tutorial when we were sculpting out the head is I went in and I applied a thin layer of clay to the inside of the eyes here and smoothed it out. So if you haven't already done that, you're gonna take the time to do that. The other thing that I didn't show on camera was um, while the clay on the face was wet, I went in and I did some indentations for his nostrils and I did a slight indentation for a mouth here. Now, if you did that, that's fine. If you didn't do that, that's not a big deal um, because we're going to go ahead and paint in these areas. Um, so that's not going to be a problem if you didn't get that part. 
All right, so at this stage, we're gonna go ahead. We've already clayed over our base here. We're gonna move forward and claying over the back, the sides, and then the neck. And then we're gonna leave the front of this for last. So that's what you're gonna do. I would go ahead and start with the upper portion of the back here. Just applying the, uh, a layer of clay. Um, one thing that I do not, so I just wanted to show how now um, you can see the difference between the two sides. I ended up adding more clay just to this top portion of where his shoulder is at the bust to bring it out a little bit farther and you could, you could probably see the difference from this side to this side. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to go ahead after I put in my first layer of clay just in this area I'm going to bulk it up a little bit so that it gives it the illusion of being a wider area because um, I didn't like the fact that uh, it wasn't as wide as I wanted it so this is how I'm going to correct it. Um, now by doing this of course this is a thicker layer of clay that I'm adding so it's going to take a little bit longer for this to dry but that's an easy way to correct um, that error um, is just by bulking up that area with a little bit more clay so I'm kind of looking at it at all angles because I want to try to get him to be as uniform as possible here Gonna add a little bit more clay here. Um, now you probably notice that when I'm pressing in this clay and applying the clay, some of it did get onto the front here of this of the bust. Don't worry about that because um, we are going to sculpt in the front as well so that's going to get covered over. So now we're going to do the same thing as we done that we have done with the head and the bottom portion. We're going to go in and smooth using our uh, paper mache paste. You can start with whatever area you want. You can start with the sides or the back. And I'm just applying like we did with the head and the base. I'm just applying that paste and smoothing it over. And you will continue doing that to the other side, to the back side, wherever it is that you have just laid clay onto. Okay, once you get to that point where you have applied your paper mache paste over your clay, um, what I like to do is go in and smooth it out using my little sculpting tool. Um, you can also use um, a spoon as well. I've showed you this in the other tutorial. And that works really well and we're just going and smoothing this out a little bit more here. I'm actually finding right now that this spoon is uh, working a lot better to smooth over this sculpture than my go-to little sculpting tool. So that really just goes to show that you don't really need any special tools um, to create anything like this. So I'm forming my uh, shoulders a little bit more since I decided to bulk it out. 
So I'm just going in and kind of forming that, making sure that it tapers. So it does, I do have to add a little pressure to it. You can see the uh, tapered effect there. Okay, so I've smoothed all that out, formed it a little bit, um, smoothed in kind of uh, the front area here where the clay ended up onto, pressing it into the form. And as you can see, um, he's not completely symmetrical, but that's not a big deal. Um, Yours probably won't be symmet completely symmetrical either. Um, if you want to take the time and really make it symmetrical, go for it. I'm not that concerned about it. Um, so there you have it right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the clay all the way around his neck at this point. So same idea, same concept, just adding that clay all the way around his neck. Make sure you get a good amount of clay around the neck um, in order to avoid any disasters like his head falling off or breaking anything like that because if you get if you have a, a good layer on the neck from the head from the base of the head to the base of the body and then you go ahead and smooth that in once it dries you won't have to worry about um, his head getting loose or falling off or anything like that so again just with the uh, paintbrush here um, going in and applying the paste to smooth out the clay layer here that I put in there. Kind of using that to feather in the clay to the base of the bust armature. All right, that's pretty good. You can go in and use your spoon here or whatever rounded sculpting tool that you're using and smooth that in a little bit more. you have that completely sculpted over with the clay and the paste and smoothed over we're going we're going to go ahead and move on to the front part of the bust okay we're ready to move on to the front of our bust here so keeping in mind our outer bit of cardboard flexible cardboard that we attached here that's going to be our marker for where we want to build this up a little bit thicker than inside here to give it a definition of him wearing a suit over his um, shirt here. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to start with these areas up here that don't have any clay on on the shoulder first off. And then I'm going to move on starting from the bottom and I'm going to add that thicker layer of clay so that we have that definition of the suit jacket. And 
those areas that did get covered over on the front with the clay that we applied on the sides, I am adding more clay to that to bulk up that area. To bulk it up so it has that definition. All right, now as you can see, it's starting to have that more three-dimensional look to the suit jacket here by just applying a thicker layer of clay around that outer cardboard, flexible cardboard that we applied. Okay, once you have that on there, go ahead again with your paste. I'm gonna go ahead and start up here in his shoulder areas. Smoothing that over. And by using the paste, I am feathering in the sides. So you'll go ahead and you'll do that same process here to all of the new clay that you just laid. And then once you have your paste and you've smoothed that out a bit, go back in with your spoon or whatever tool you're using and smooth that over as well. When you get to the inside of this part, make sure that you're creating that, you're keeping that three-dimensional look to it. So if you could see from that angle, going inside there and smoothing that out like that, as well as the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and just press that in a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Smooth it all in at, at, at the, the top here where you applied the clay. And then on the sides as well, make sure you're, you're smoothing that over where the clay may have overlapped. You're gonna do that for the whole thing. All right, so as you can see, I have finished uh, smoothing that over. That's the way it looks. You can clearly see there's gonna be a definition to give it a three-dimensional look to it for a suit jacket. Now what we're gonna do the same thing for the inside of the eyes and again I apologize because I actually didn't show you that on the last tutorial um, but we're gonna go ahead and apply a thinner layer of clay inside here so that's what we'll do now doesn't have to be very thick um, you don't you definitely don't want it to be too thick that you kind of ruin your the definition that you work so hard on um, and, and getting the suit jacket more three-dimensional. So just, just a thinner layer of clay in there, um, enough to cover it. It will be plenty, um, and it'll still be very strong, and it will dry hard. Um, one of the things that I mentioned in the, in the last uh, part two of this tutorial when we were creating Jack Skellington's uh, his eyes and clinging over his head is that I said Jack wasn't a very complex character. Um, what I meant was that he's simplistically, he's a simplistically drawn character, um, but his personality is definitely complex, very moody type of a character. So I'm making sure that I have covered that over and then I'm gonna go in with my paste again with my brush get in there and smooth that over feather it in along the neck and around the edges here I'll go in with my little sculpting 
tool and I'm going to smooth that in even more. Alright, so that is completely filled in, smoothed over, and you can clearly see the definition, the three-dimensional definition from where his shirt will be and his jacket. So let me go ahead and turn it in different directions so that you can see that. All right, from this point, let's go back to these bow ties here. All right. Now, what I mentioned in the uh, beginning of the video is that you may need a hot glue gun, you may need some Velcro, those types of things. And the reason for that is that there are a couple of different ways that you could go about in attaching your bow tie to your sculpture, okay? Um, one of the ways that you could do that is by waiting for this to completely dry. And then you will take your hot glue gun, take your hot glue gun and put some hot glue on the back areas of where you're going to attach the bow tie. So in this case, it would be um, on the front, kind of on his suit jacket area there. That's one way to do it. And then once you get it hot glued on there, you take your clay and you go in there and you're gonna fill in around that area inside there with clay and apply the paste over the clay and smooth it in so that it looks uniform and you can stick, it, stick that bow tie on there or fix the bow tie that way. And as you can see, um, while it's wet, um, there is a, you could go ahead and skip the process of hot gluing it on because as you can see by just pressing this on here, it's, it's already sticking. But of course it's not, it's not on there completely secure. So the best thing to do is when you determine where you're going to attach your bow tie to these areas. You're going to take a little bit. You're going to take two round, shape them into balls here of your clay. It doesn't have to be very big. Shape them into balls. And then you're going to stick that there. You already know where your mark is because you could see where the clay was disturbed from me pressing the bow tie against it. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. Make a little ball, stick it on there, take our paste, add some paste on it. Just like that. Feather that in a little bit. Take our bow tie and right onto those areas. Go ahead and press, press that on there. Oop, it slipped a bit. just like that. Then in around these sections, if you could see, you could see where the clay is in there, hopefully. You go ahead and stick some more clay in there, right around those sections, where the bow tie meets the bust. Just like that, you'll do that all the way around. as well as on the bottom. Just like that. And then if you use your uh, smaller paintbrush, 
and you're going to go ahead and apply paste to that fresh clay that we wedged in between the bust and the bow tie. Make sure you're feathering over it just like that. The idea is to get um, to get it to stick on there without obstructing the front of it. But you'll have a secure enough um, connection to the base with the bow tie. Just kind of feather that over a little bit onto the bow tie with your paste. inside down in here as well okay, that's one way and you would do the same thing obviously with the other side but that is one way um, that you could permanently connect your bow tie here to your sculpture I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Um, I'm not going to permanently connect this to this sculpture um, because I'm actually mailing this particular sculpture and one of the things that I worry about is the bow tie breaking off or getting this the ends getting damaged um, while uh, it's being in the process of being shipped. Okay, another way to attach your bow tie to Jack Skellington is not permanently, but by using some Velcro. And as you can see, I have some Velcro here. So you're gonna want, you're actually gonna want to do this after the bust is completely painted and dry and then this would be the last bit so basically you're going to determine where your bow tie is going to be where it's going to be attached to so in this case it would be something like that so I would attach a piece here and then obviously you're going to attach the other piece of Velcro to the actual bow tie. Get it in the position on where you want it to be. So basically right about there. And that's how you would attach it. And of course you would do the same thing to the other side. So this way, when you go to store it, this, is, this part is removable. Um, that's not sticking to this because I just put some wet clay on it. But anyway, this, it, this would be completely removable. Um, so if you go to store it, you don't have to worry about this breaking off or getting damaged because you could wrap this in some bubble wrap separately from your bust. Or if you're mailing something like this, um, that's probably the best way to do that. But again, you're going to want to do that if that's what you choose to do after the entire thing is painted and the bow tie is painted and dry. And then, um, then you can go ahead and attach those Velcro pieces. So those are two different ways to attach your Jack Skellington bow tie. All right, now for the next, uh, next part here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this bigger bust. Obviously, this one that we just worked on here or that I just worked on is wet, so it's not ready for paint, but this guy is completely dry. He's ready for paint. Um, 
Before I go ahead and start painting this and what I've already done is that I have taken some sandpaper and I have sanded, um, try to sand out and smooth out a little bit more of any kind of rough edge that I have on him, on his head, uh, around his neck area, and the bust part as well. So you, you're, you'll want to take the time to do that. Just lightly sand any areas that you think need to be a little smoother. Um, and then you can move on with the painting process, which is what we're gonna about to do right now. We're in the home stretch, guys. Okay, for this uh, painting set section here in the tutorial, uh, this is optional. I like to start with applying a base of white primer over the entire sculpture. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well as the little bat uh, bow tie here for Jack. So I have my white primer there, my paintbrushes. Um, the reason that I like to do this, oh, and as a side note, um, I'm wearing gloves because primer um, doesn't come off very well on skin. So I'm avoiding, trying to avoid as much contact with my skin by wearing some gloves so I suggest that you do that if you're concerned about that and the other thing that I've done is I have covered my table here with a sheet of plastic to protect it from getting any kind of primer or paint on it um, so going back to the primer uh, the reason that I like to apply a layer of primer over my sculptures is twofold um, number one it gives me a nice white surface to apply other paint on so it's easier for me to see than rather just applying it over this uh, light gray clay um, that has dried so that's one reason another reason is because the primer is going to help seal your sculpture um, from any from moisture or anything like that so that's really the biggest reason is to seal the sculpture um, and I use I prefer to use a water-based primer it doesn't smell um, I mean it does have a it does have an odor to it but not compared to the odor of a oil-based primer so keep that in mind, especially if you're painting indoors. Um, and even if you're painting indoors using a primer like this, like I said, it does have an odor to it. So make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Uh, open a window, something like that. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm just starting with the back here and applying a thin coat here of the water-based primer. All right, so as you can see, I went ahead and primered this over. So it has a coat of primer over the entire bust, as well as the front of the bow tie at this point. Once that dries, I'll primer over the back part of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. Usually it takes about an hour for the water-based primer, an hour to, I don't know, hour and a half for it to be completely dry. And uh, then you can we can move on to actually applying actual paint. Now again, the primer process is completely optional. Um, so if you don't feel like you want to do the primer first, go ahead, skip that part, and we'll just go right into the next portion here, which is going to be actually painting this thing and bringing him to life. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the back. Just painting that over. Um, depending on what kind of paint you are using, you may have to do two coats of this. I can already tell that I'm gonna have to do two coats. Um, so you'll let it dry. If that's the case, you'll let it dry, of course, in between the coats of paint. I 
I'm using latex paint, like house paint. Um, you can use acrylic paint, that's fine. I do not recommend that you use anything other than latex paint or acrylic paint. Um, you can, you know, if you use oil paint, it's going to take a heck of a lot longer to dry. And that's not really what you want. And besides that, we're going to go ahead and once, once we're done with the entire painting process, we're going to seal this thing with some spar urethane to keep the moisture out and to protect it a little bit better. So at this point, this point here, just go ahead and paint over your your bust and including your base and your shoulders areas up here, behind here, leaving the neck. We're not going to do anything with the head right now or the face. We're going to do that after this dries. <clears throat> just make sure that you're not putting any black into this area up here because that's going to be part of his shirt, okay? All right, so as you can see, <clears throat> I went ahead and painted black over the bust area, including his base. I took my smaller brush and I went around and created kind of an edge to where his neck is going to be. I did the same thing around the front here, created this line for where his jacket is going to end and his shirt begins. Um, I made sure I went in with a smaller brush and kind of redefined that area in there. Um, as you can see, I ended up getting some splotches of black paint in there. It's not going to be a big deal because I'm going to go ahead and paint this area white. Um, I am going to need to put a second coat on this when it dries. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and just sit him, set him aside and taking my that uh, bow tie here I'm gonna go ahead and paint the first or the front of it you can start with the back if you'd like I'm gonna go ahead and paint the front of it entirely black so that's what I'm doing right now and then I'm gonna go ahead and sit that aside to dry this is also gonna need a couple of coats of black paint um, now, one thing that I do want to mention is if you're going to go ahead and, and use latex house paint, get the water-based. Do not get the oil-based paint um, because that's going to that, that has a stronger odor to it, and it's completely unnecessary to have a oil-based paint for this type of project. Um, I suggest that unless you're going to use a lot of the latex house paint uh, go ahead and just get a quart size of it um, I buy this that stuff in uh, gallons because I use a lot of black paint for many different projects so it's just more economical for me to buy it in a gallon size so but unless you're gonna do a bunch of different projects and using a lot of black latex house paint um, it's completely unnecessary for you to spend that money on a giant gallon especially if your project is small but like I said you don't even have to do that you could go ahead and just get some regular old acrylic art paint from your art supply store or any kind of big box retail store is gonna have that okay so I finished the first coat here on the bow tie again I'm gonna sit that aside to dry once it's dry, we'll come back and we're going to paint the back of this bow tie. I'm going to do a second coat on his bust here and then we'll move on. Okay, so I went ahead and I made sure I had put two coats of my black paint on my bust. Left this white, the shirt part open. And I also uh, covered back front and back of my bow tie black and we're at the point here where we're gonna go ahead and start applying our white paint um, now again I'm using latex uh, house paint 
they sell these little containers of this stuff if you're going to use white latex paint um, I suggest getting a small container like this unless you're going to do a bunch of stuff and need a bunch of that paint or if you're using white acrylic paint that's completely fine as well so I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come in here and cover this area white so I've got a couple of different sizes of brushes here I'm going to start with a uh, slightly bigger brush and very carefully go in there and start just applying the paint so I'm going to use this uh, bigger brush here just for the inside and then I'll go in around the outer edge there with a smaller paintbrush going in with my thinner paintbrush just around the edges here evening them out and as you can see down here I slopped some white paint there so I'm gonna have to go back in and touch up some areas all right so I went in with my white paint covered over that center piece there for his shirt now I'm gonna go ahead and go in and start applying the white paint over the primered head here I'm not gonna bother doing the inside of his eyes because we're gonna paint those black but I'm gonna make sure that I get a good coat of this white paint on his entire head here I'm gonna go ahead and paint also the inside ridge of his eye because that part's going to be white the only thing that's going to be black or in his eye is the inside part here all right I think I've got a pretty even coat of white paint all around his head here I'm going to take my smaller brush and I'm going to go ahead and paint his neck head is completely painted over with the white latex paint or if you're using acrylic white paint including the insides ridge of his eye and right around his neck and also the inside which is going to be his shirt white shirt area and we're going to go ahead and let that completely dry um, I'm going to have to go in and touch up some areas where I splotched some paint so I got to go in with my black paint and touch that up and I'm also going to go ahead and give my bat uh, bow tie another coat of black paint because some areas um, I don't know if you can see that, that didn't get completely covered so I'm going to go ahead and do that let that dry and then we'll move on to filling in the eyes here with black after this is completely dry his nostrils here and then we're going to be drawing in his mouth with his little stitches on his mouth and then after that we'll go ahead and we're going to draw in his pinstripes and also put the white stripes onto his bow tie as well using our paint pen or paint marker white paint marker and then we're just about done all right we are at the point where everything that we've already painted is dry and at this stage we're gonna go ahead and paint in the inside of his eyes here don't paint the inside of the ridge that you created just the very inside of it all right so as you can see the inside of the eyes here are painted black um, I used a bigger brush for just the inside and then I went in around the edges there with a finer smaller paintbrush um, I'm going to need to put a second coat 
on his eyes once that dry once that has dried um, but at this point I'm gonna go ahead and use my black paint and paint in his nostrils and his mouth as well so I'm gonna go I'm gonna use my smaller paintbrush for that just gonna go in there now I uh, if you recall I did create some indentations into the wet clay so I'm just kind of filling in those indentations with my black paint um, if you did not put in your indentations in the wet clay um, obviously you're just going to go ahead and paint them on and that's not a big deal also uh, when the clay was wet I made an indentation for part of his mouth here um, again if you didn't do that not a big deal you're just going to go ahead and paint in your mouth um, I'm going to use my fine paintbrush here if you have a black paint, fine black paint marker, um, that would be great for this. Um, otherwise, just go ahead and use your, your black paint. And I'm just gonna go ahead now and just fill in that area there. All right, so I painted that in where my indentation was. Um, now you have a decision to make if uh, on your mouth here it will give the give him more of an expression um, you could make just the line here like I'm doing or you can paint in part of an open mouth if you'd like but I'm gonna go ahead and I just kind of like the look of this right here closed mouth he's kind of has sort of a grimacing expression on his face and I'm just gonna go ahead and take my fine small paintbrush here and I'm gonna go ahead and just paint in the stitches for his mouth I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch to my artist pen because I don't have a paintbrush that's thin enough for me to create the lines that I want for the stitching on his mouth. Um, so yeah, make sure you're using a fine enough paintbrush so that you get those thinner lines in there or use a paint pen like this one. Um, you can also, if you have a fine tip Sharpie, that's gonna work perfectly fine too. You can use a Sharpie, fine tip Sharpie. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish his mouth off um, using my paint marker here. It's just much easier for me to control. Go ahead and space them out <clears throat> to whatever space spacing you want in between them. Um, make them as long as you want. You can make some of them shorter than, than the others. All right, yeah, something like that. Go in and clean that up a little bit there. probably go in because this one's a little thicker than the other ones it's not that big of a deal but if you're a perfectionist then you'll go in with your after this is dry you'll go in with your white paint pen and uh, even them out that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing that looks pretty good good thing to use as a reference is your photo of your Jack Skellington that uh, you used as a reference to creating your bust here um, for the pinstripes. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, now, you have a big decision here. Um, you can go ahead and pinstripe 
the entire thing or you can pinstripe just the front. Um, I typically will pinstripe just the front and then leave the sides and the back black. Um, you can do that if you want or pinstripe the front here, leave the sides black and pinstripe the back. It's however you want to do it, um, but you're going to go ahead and use your reference photo in creating your pinstripes. I have a reference photo here that I'm going to use um, just on my phone um, for his suit jacket. So what I'm going to try to do here is right around what would be his lapel area, I'm going to do some sideways pinstripes. And then on the rest of it here, I'm going to do vertical pinstripes. So that's how I'm going to do it, um, starting from up here and working my way down. And I'm using my white paint, uh, fine tip white paint marker. So as you can see, I went in with my white paint pen and I kind of created a slanted sort of a where his lapel would be on his suit jacket. Just kind of painted that in with my paint marker. Um, so that's kind of the idea. You guys will probably be a lot better at this than I am. Um, but then at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start from the middle down here on the bottom. The bottom portion here, I'm gonna draw a line in the middle. And that's going to kind of give me a guide on where I need to go to create my vertical lines um, across the front of his suit here. Okay, so I've gotten to the point here where I've taken my paint, white paint marker. I created an area for some diagonal lines for his, which would represent his lapel. And then I took my paint pen. I went all the way around the edge here on both sides. And then I started from the middle down here, created a line there, and then worked my way up. Did the same thing in the back. I did decide to actually pinstripe the back of him instead of leaving it all entirely black. So I create, I created a line here, painted in a line here, and then did the same thing. I started in the middle and then I just did my lines, my vertical lines all the way down. Now I'm at the point here where I'm working on the upper pieces here on his shoulders. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is follow these lines all the way over and across so that they meet all the way down this direction, okay? Um, and as you can see, this is by no means perfect. I'm gonna go in um, and kind of clean it up a little bit, and but it'll be, it'll be all fine. So that's what I'm gonna continue to do, just create the stripes, trying to match it from the back here to the front. Okay, so I finished that up. Again, by no means perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and go in and I'll clean it up a little bit, make my lines a little more even. Um, but I did, so I did the front, the shoulder areas, and the back. I am choosing not to put pinstripes here because I think it's gonna look way too busy if I add some pinstripes, but that's completely up to you. And it's also completely up to you on how thick you want your pinstripes and how many you want on there, um, so on and so forth. But now, that is done. Um, moving on to our bow tie. So we're going to do, the, it's the same process for the bow tie using the white paint pen. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in his eyes here. Um, now, if you didn't um, build up 
the inside part of the little bat face that's completely fine not a big deal if you chose not to do that if you didn't put any indentations in your sculpt um, that's fine you're just gonna go ahead and create you're just gonna use your paint pen and make your lines in there and that's gonna be perfectly fine use your little reference photo um, for his bat wings here bat tie something like that I had to go in there and I used my black paint marker or paint pen and I cleaned up around the eye because I made a mess I pressed down too hard with my white paint pen and it got all goopy in there so I fixed that so you're gonna go ahead and do the other side just like uh, this side over here and then you're pretty much all done I finished my bow tie here um, I I went ahead and I actually put a white line around the little bat face um, that's completely up to you you decide it's your piece um, you can leave it all black whatever you want to do but we're gonna let this dry and then um, we're gonna go ahead and attach this with some velcro and that's about it we're gonna spray it and seal it and then we are done but in the meantime take the time if you want if you don't like your lines if some of them need to be evened out or touched up take the time to do that prior to moving on to velcroing obviously um, I'm gonna take the time and touching up I gotta put another coat of black paint in his eyes here I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the same with uh, using my marker black marker with his mouth and then I'm gonna even out some of these uneven pinstripes on him and then um, let it let it all dry and then we'll come back we'll attach this bow tie and then we'll seal it with some spar urethane all right guys it's time to attach our bow tie and i'm using velcro so i'm going to take one part of my velcro here I'm gonna line this up, see where exactly I want to attach my bow tie. I kinda of like it right about there. So using that area there, I'm gonna go ahead and attach a piece of Velcro on this side. You're gonna to wanna to do this prior to sealing it with the spar urethane. like that and right about here so I've got two pieces of velcro on either side of my bust and then I'm gonna attach to the back of my bat wing here or bat bow tie lining it up again it's gonna be about right there Let's see how close I got. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to do the other side. My Velcro. Lining that up. Trying to find where I want to put the other piece here. And there we go. Now this is just regular Velcro. Um, 
the other stuff that I showed you, the clear stuff, is like an interlocking type of a Velcro. That's this stuff here. You just cut this and basically you're going to do the same thing. Um, this stuff is pretty strong, um, but if you don't have this and you have regular Velcro, go ahead and use that. That's perfectly fine. So now that we have that attached, we are ready to take this guy outside and get him sealed with some spar urethane. Okay, so I have moved outside because obviously I do not want to spray spar urethane inside my studio space. You want to be in a well ventilated area, uh, preferably outside. This is my preferred product for sealing um, paper mache art. This is uh, spar urethane. I use the clear satin and you're going to spray it evenly all over your piece of art and it usually takes maybe an hour to two hours depending on the temperature of the room you're in or the temperature out, outdoors obviously. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start spraying this guy. Noise out here, kids playing, birds chirping, all that good stuff, but I'm sure you understand. I'm going to go ahead and start spraying him. You don't want to be too close to him. Just make sure you get a good area, good even coat all the way around. I am wearing gloves for this. If you have gloves, um, I suggest that you wear them. Go ahead and turn them. That should do it. All right, you made it through. You are completely done. Congratulations, thanks for sticking with us. Um, I know this was a very long tutorial in three parts and it was very in depth. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope that you get many, more, many years of enjoyment out of the Jack Skellington bus that you created. Um, please email us. I'd love to see your work, your finished piece. Um, so that would be scarecrowjoes at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Scarecrow Joe's Studio. Follow us on Instagram at scarecrowjoes.studio. And make sure you subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Turn on notifications. We're going to stick with our Jack Skellington theme. And our next tutorial is going to be on how to make a Jack Skellington jack-o'-lantern sculpture from start to finish. It will be one lengthy tutorial. I won't break it down into segments. We'll get it all done in one tutorial. And I hope you enjoy that one as well. And that wraps it, guys. So catch you in the next one.